In the year 1750, England was going through a period of lawlessness, unprecedented in her history. Highwaymen terrorized the roads, footpads and cutthroats ran riot in the towns. Doesn't change much, has it? In an effort to combat this wave of crime, King George set up a special police force called the Bow Street Runners, under the command of a man who had a reputation for being always on the job, Roger Daly. And you men have been especially chosen for one task, to wipe out crime and violence. And I know I can depend upon you to do a good job. Carry on, Captain Fancy. Thank you, sir. Bow Street Runners, attention! Attention! Do your duties! Quick! Run! Quick! Run! Quick! Run! Quick! Run! Quick! Run! Halt! Oh. Right! Everybody out! Hands up, mate! Turn over your valuables! Out and hand over! But despite these initial successes, there was one notorious highwayman who constantly eluded the Bow Street runners. One Richard Turpin, more commonly referred to as Big Dick, owing to the unusual size of his weapon. Get ready. Turpin, ma'am. Blimey! <laughs> <laughs> Will you stay where you are? Behave yourselves now! Behave yourselves! You! Get out of the road! Unless you want this broken across your head! Excuse me, madam. I don't think you've noticed what I've got here. <laughs> that doesn't scare me. I've seen bigger ones in my time. That doesn't surprise me. You are wasting your time. We have nothing to give you. Madame Desiree and her birds of paradise. <laughs> and you say you've got nothing to give us? You must be jesting. My girls are not fancy women. I warn you, they will fight for their honor. Will I? <laughs> Come on out of here, little honey. No, you don't. Stay where you are, girls. I insist stay where you are. All right, lads. Get your bags. I'll have the big blonde. Your saddle bags, you fool. <laughs> All right, ladies, we just want your clothes and your valuables. Oh, is that all? That'll do, Lizzie. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, Lizzie. Oh, will you please? <laughs> Give us that. All right. <laughs> all right, ladies, don't worry. The only harm you'll suffer will be physical. <laughs> you'll get nothing from us, I tell you. Not a thing. Do you mind, madam? They know what I want. <laughs> come here. Come here. <laughs> Shall I rush him now, Sergeant? No, I think we'll let them uncover a little more evidence first. Oh, no. I see what you mean, Sergeant. Catch him right in the act, eh? I'll not leave it as late as that. That's far enough. You can see they're not hiding anything. <laughs> now then, what about you? No, you are not having it off. That's not what I had in mind. What's on the end of that gold chain? No. No, you must not touch that. It, it is my only means of support. Come on, let me have a look at it. No, you must <laughs> I told you it was my only means of support. <laughs> Stay where you are. We're Bow Street Runners and you're under arrest. Drop them. 
like you just did. No, 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 the pistols. All oh, these. All right, stand away from them, ladies. How do we get them away from here, Sergeant? Uh, 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 yes, I, I, I was just wondering about that. Well, that should be any problem. We've got our horses over there. Oh, yes, you'd love that, wouldn't you? I wasn't born yesterday. Of course you were. You're too clever for the likes of us. Well, what else are you going to do? You can't use the ladies' coach, can you? No, we can't use the ladies' coach. We, 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 we... Uh, why not? Can you think of a better way? You see? I told you you were too clever for us. <laughs> uh, that's if it's all right with you, ma'am. Uh, just to take them to the nearest lock-up. <laughs> with pleasure. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you, ma'am. I'll send it right back for you. All right, you. Get in. After you, Sergeant. Oh, very kind, sir. That's very nice of you. You don't... <laughs> oh, no. You must think I'm a right mug. Get in. Come on, the lot of you. Quick as you like. Covered all the time. Use your loaf. I'll say promotion for you. Oh, uh, right. Leave it to me, Sergeant. Good lad, that's it. Make a bit of room for me, lads, if you will. I'll just sit on the outside. <laughs> oh. <laughs> lad, Bow Street. Get in there and bring out Captain Fancy immediately. Yes, me lad. I suppose I could wear a, a cod piece. I wouldn't advise it, my captain. The price of a cod it is today. Yes, what is it? Begging your pardon, Captain. Oh, Bullock, I told you I was not to be disturbed. Yes, Captain, but the chief's outside. The chief? Sir Roger, my coat. Oh, why didn't you tell me, you fool? But I just did, Captain. No bandy words with me out of the way. Oh, Sir Roger, what an unexpected <gasps> pleasure. We hadn't expected you back for over a week. Nor would I be, were it not for that rich tapping. Oh, you mustn't let these trifling matters concern you, sir. We have the matter well under control. It may be of interest to you to learn that he robbed me on the road to York last night. And he's taken everything we've got. Oh, well, you better discuss this inside, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon, my lady. He really did take everything, didn't he? Everything. Where exactly did this happen, did you say? On the road to York. Just outside Denture, Captain. Would that be upper or lower Denture? About halfway between the two. In that case, sir, we've nothing to worry about. You may have nothing to worry about, Captain, but you have not been travelling all night with your bare buttocks on cold leather. No, sir, I mean I've had one of my best men patrolling that stretch of road, Sergeant Strap. And if Turpin was around, he'll have had him. You can be sure of that. I hope for your sake that you're right, Captain Fancy. You can depend on it, sir. Nothing gets past old Jock Strap. <laughs> Ah, here he is now. Well, Strap, what happened? Oh, well, sir, I, I thought I'd better report to you yes. personally, sir. Yes, good. You see, we ran into Turpin's gang last night. And you apprehended him? Uh, well, yes, sir, yes. Sir. There, what did I tell you? Good old Jock. Yes, well, there's one slight problem, sir. He got away. I knew he wouldn't let me die. He got away? How? Well, it, it's a long story. Sir. I don't want to hear any long stories, you incompetent dunderhead. Get out of it. I'm sorry, there's been a slight mishap, my lord. I know, I heard. But don't worry, I intend to take personal charge from now on. And I can promise you that I'll have Dick Turpin hanging from a gibbet within a month, or my name is not Desmond Fancy. There's only one comment I have to make on that, Captain. <laughs> That's it. Pardon? <laughs> You're quite right, my captain. There's, there's definitely something wrong with the hang of the breeches at the front. <laughs> Could you just stand still a moment? Please? I'm far too busy to worry about that at the moment. Go on, Strap. Well, as I was saying, sir, all these hold-offs seem to have been happening within a 20-mile radius of this area here. Oh, yes, 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 well. And so we can deduce from that that Turpin's headquarters are somewhere around there. What? Oh, any imbecile could see that man. Yes, well, I just wanted to make sure that you did. Well, of course I did. Uh, are you implying that any imbecile has got more sense than I have? Oh, no, sir. 
I should hope not indeed. Any fool can make fatuous generalizations like that. What I want to know is, where is his headquarters? Where? I was just coming to that. Well, get on. There's a notorious inn, just as you go into Lower Denture here. The old cock on the right. <laughs> well, that's where we've been going wrong. Yeah, what? I've made provision on the left. <laughs> Will you shut up about the wretched britches? Oh, go on, Strap, go on. Uh, well, sir, the old cock's been well known as a meeting place for criminals for many years. And I think that is where we should start looking for Turpin. Work and then deliver! Deliver, I say, deliver! Oh, well, you can't win them all. <laughs> I think we'll have a word with the good rector. What for, Captain? It never does any harm to have the godly on one side. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh. Good day, gentlemen. May I be of help? Possibly. Are you the rector here? That is my good fortune, sir, the Reverend Flasher. Well, Reverend Flasher, is there somewhere confidential we can talk? In the vestry. Follow me. Thank you, Tom. I'd like to speak to these gentlemen privately. This looks more like an armory than a vestry, Rector. Well, we do find it useful to keep a few pistols handy. Against thieves, you mean? And reluctant bridegroom. Oh! <laughs> Thank you, Tom. You may go. Thanks. I've got the odd feeling I've seen that man somewhere before. Uh, gentlemen, I don't like to rush you, but I have a marriage and a christening to perform today. Well, sounds as if they keep you busy, Rector. Happily, the same parties are concerned in both events. Me think someone's been putting the cart before the horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's the usual practice here, I'm afraid. Yes, a, a romp in the hay is worth a bun in the oven any time. <laughs> yes, all right, thank you. We don't wish to know that, Sergeant. Sergeant? Yes, confidentially, we are Bow Street runners. In truth? In truth, I am Captain Fancy. This is Sergeant Strap. And why be so secretive about it? We don't want anyone in the area to know who we are, especially the one they call Big Dick. Then why tell me? A oh, man in your position has everyone's confidence. You might hear of something that would be of value to us. Ah, oh, yes, Captain, but even if I did, I couldn't possibly betray that confidence. You know that. There's a reward of 100 guineas for information leading to his capture. Perhaps I could make an exception. I thought you might. Well, I'm a mere man like yourself, Captain, and I would like to get my organ in use again. I beg your pardon. The bellows are leaking, and it does cost so much to repair it. Well, if you do hear anything, we shall be at the old cock inn. Ah, yes, I know it. Incognito, don't forget, so mum's the word. Yes, mum. Beg your pardon, sir. Yes, Harriet, what is it? Mistress Hockett sent me to say the wedding party is coming. Well, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me. Yes, well, we'll be leaving you now. Okay. That way? Uh, of course, yes. Mm. A comely wench, indeed. Wouldn't mind putting me cart before her. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> cart before. <clears throat> that tall one. I'm sure he was one of the Bow Street runners the other night. They both are. How do you know? They told me. <laughs> they want me to help them catch Big Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Here, does this mean we've got to lie low for a bit? Well, we'll see. What did he mean when he said he wanted to put his cart before me? Well, that's a bit difficult to explain in so many words. <gasps> well, couldn't you show me? Rector! Oh, blast. Yes, Miss Hoggett. Rector, the wedding party has arrived. <laughs> so I hear. Would you please start playing the wedding music? Very well, Rector. The usual march. Fight the good fight. Very good, Rector. Tonight we're going to go to the old cock inn. Are you game? 
Oh, yes, sir. Oh, I'd do anything for you. You know that. You mean that? Anything? Anything. Well, in that case... Yes? Go and pump the organ. Evening, Mum. Don't you evening me, you wretch. What are my girls doing down here? I don't know. I haven't been watching them. You know my orders. They are only allowed down here to perform. I thought that's what they were doing. That's enough. <laughs> for the next man who tries to make free with one of my girls. <laughs> one fancy a poke with that. What did you say? Your oh. blade, ma'am. You handle it too expertly for my liking. Well, I shouldn't worry. You don't look as if you've got much to lose. <laughs> what to lose? Shut up! But remember, we're supposed to be criminals. Try to act like one. Here, give us your tuppence and be off. Tuppence for a quart. Like that bloody robbery, so it is. Two porters, please, landlord. Hello, sir. <laughs> Room all right? It'll do. You can't be too particular when one's on the run. Is it the law after you, then, sir? After him? You've obviously never heard of Dandy Desmond. Randy who? Uh, uh, Dandy. Dandy Desmond. He's wanted for robbery in six counties. It's a great honour to have you with us, then, sir. If I can do anything for you, don't you forget to give me the nod. Well, there is something you may be able to help me with. I'm very anxious to meet this highwayman I've heard so much about. What is it you call him? The Big Dick? You mean Turpin? Ah, that's him, yes. Do you know him? No, sir, nobody does. Except uh, old Maggie over there. She claims Big Dick went to her for treatment once. It must have been hard up at the time. <laughs> no, sir, not that sort of treatment. She's a local midwife. M midwife? What on earth could have been wrong with him? Maybe it was his birthday. Birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Oh, come along. What on earth possessed you to give me a name like Dandy Desmond? Well, I don't know. It just sort of uh, popped out, but it does seem to suit you. Wanted in six counties with a name like that, they'll be wondering what for. He's only trying to help. Mm, all right, all right. Well, in future, kindly leave the talking to me. Ah, good evening, missus. Mind if we join you? <coughs> what do you want? <laughs> I was told as how you might be able to assist us. Oh. I understand you've met Dick Turpin. Oh, maybe I have. Maybe I haven't. Can't rightly remember. And now then, Maggie, I feel sure we may be able to jog your memory a little. Oh, it's just come back to me, uh -huh. sir. I thought it might. Big Dick come up my place one night with a bit of buckshot in his cheek. Ah, so you saw his face then? No, not that cheek, silly. You mean he kept his face mask on? Of course. But I'd know him anywhere again with his britches, Dan. <laughs> really? How? Dear, oh dear, it's gone again. Memory do play queer tricks, don't it? <laughs> oh, it comes back to me now. Yes, go on then. How would you recognise him with his breeches down? Well, he's got this funny birthmark on his diddler. On his what? Diddler. You know what a diddler is, don't you? A diddler is a slang term. <laughs> oh, flap me sideways. I've never heard it called that before. Well, you haven't been diddled as often as me, ducky. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was a fat lot of good, that was. Not that my opinion counts for much, but I would say that is quite a valuable clue. Oh, really? Now, what do you suggest we do now? Hold a diddler identification parade? I'm well aware that any suggestion I make will be quite useless. Quite. And to point out that Big Dick might well be someone in this room utterly stupid. The height of folly, indeed. But distinguishing birthmark or not. Sooner or later, he's got to answer the call of nature. The call of... what? I don't follow you. No, but I'll follow him. Oh, Jock, my dear fellow. They don't call you Jock Strap for nothing. <laughs> you don't hang about. With your permission, sir, I'll start on that one. Oh, 
you. <laughs> What are you up to? Uh, uh, nothing. Uh, nice place. Do you come here often? <laughs> well, not that one. But I'll keep trying. Oh, what a place to look for clues. Right, now then, could I have a bit of quiet, please? Nice and quiet, because this is the moment we've all been waiting for. It's my great pleasure to introduce Madame Desiree and her eyes. Oz was. <laughs> Madame Desiree and her bloody birds. <laughs> We are now proud to show to you, in different positions, the Sirens of the Rock. <laughs> These maidens lured all sailors to their doom in ancient history, though who did what and how has forever been a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go in. Good evening, Rector. What's going on? Oh, it's just a travelling show, Rector, to amuse the lads. The Vestal Virgins of Old Rome, who from their birth were taught to stay forever pure and chaste, but never to get caught. Very instructive. Are those the ones that were held up on the road the other night? Ah, oh, that's right, Rector. By Big Dick. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. The quicker that villain's caught, the better, eh, Dump? That's right, sir. No one's safe from Big Dick, and that's a fact. Alas, yes. The shepherdesses who spent the day in search of a stray lamb and oft would spend most of the night looking for a ram. <laughs> <laughs> Lands, they hunted for sheer love of it, were oftentimes called nymphs because they couldn't get enough of it. <laughs> Do you mind? Do you have strangers in, Bodkin? Oh, them. Um, ah, they're coming from London today. He calls himself Dandy Desmond. Dandy Desmond? <laughs> Perhaps I can get him into the choir. We're short of a soprano. And finally, our maids at rest. So languorous and so sightly. Tis not the show that tires them so, but doing it twice nightly. nightly! <laughs> you wait here. Hello, Maggie. Where have you been? I didn't see you in church on Sunday. I'm not surprised, Rector, I wasn't there. <laughs> Another meeting of the Purity League. <laughs> William, don't you think it's time you came to church again? What do you mean, Rector? Don't you remember? I was there last Sunday. I took the collection. I know. Next Sunday, I want you to bring it back. <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. Mind if I join you? By all means, my dear Rector, by all means. Thank you. As long as you don't start lecturing us on the error of our ways. Have you had any luck with your investigations? Yes, we have an important clue as to his identity. You have? And what is that? It appears he has a curious marking on his, if you'll pardon the expression, Reverend, 
on his diddler. Diddler? I don't know what that is. Oh, well, uh, perhaps a more familiar word for you would be... Oh! But I fear that won't be of much use to you. Why not? Well, so many folk round here keep poultry, you see. I don't mean that kind of... Oh, this is very difficult. If I may be permitted to speak. You see, what he means, Rector, is that he's got a birthmark on his... Ah! <laughs> now he's got it. Ah, yes. got it. Yes, now I have got it, yes. But, but I honestly don't think it's possible that Jack the Woodcutter... Jack the Woodcutter? Well, he's the only one I know that has a chopper. A chopper? No, no, oh, this is very, this is ridiculous. Um, Reverend, do you know the difference between a man and a woman? Oh, yes, of course. Well, that's it, the difference. It's on his difference. Oh, yes. <laughs> now I understand. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, dear. I hope I haven't said anything to upset your friend. Oh, no, no, he's going to have a look. At what? At his difference. At the diddler. I mean, oh, don't let's start that all over again. Yes, well, I can't tarry any longer. Duty calls. Don't let me detain you, my dear rector. Goodbye, my son. And I will pray for success to follow up your every endeavour. And up yours too, rector. That's funny. What? What's funny? It looks like rain. Rain? Yes, outside. You see, uh, no, I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> This is going to be a long job. Well, if it is, it'll be easier for me to see, won't it? Who's there? A friend, ma'am. Come to wish you well. In this place, I should say so. <laughs> Ma'am, I am the rector of Upper Densha. Oh, oh, well, well, well then, do come in, the rector. Thank you. Oh, I hope I haven't come at an awkward moment. What? Oh no, I, I, I was just uh, tidying up. Well, allow me. Oh. I felt I had to come, Ma'am, after hearing of your terrible experience at the hands of that ruffian turpin. Oh, well, that's very kind of you, I'm sure, rector. When I think of it, those lovely young ladies of yours being made to strip half naked. Oh, I wish I'd been there. What? To offer my protection. Oh! Oh, yes, of course. If ever a man deserved to be hanged, it's him after what he did to me. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Oh, no, he didn't do anything like that. Just a quotation, ma'am. Galatians, chapter 6, verse 7. Oh! Oh, yes, of course, yes. <laughs> yes, also it seems terrible that with such a definite clue to his identity, we cannot bring him to book. Oh? What clue is that? Oh, dear, you haven't heard? No. What is it? Well, it is of a somewhat delicate nature, ma'am. I don't know that... Oh, I'm sure you can tell me, Rector. Well, perhaps if I may whisper? Really? Oh, how very unusual. <laughs> uh, not that I have had experience of these things, of course. Well, I did warn you it was a somewhat delicate matter. Well, it is not quite the same as comparing fingerprints or anything else, is it? <laughs> no, indeed, no. It's also so frustrating when I almost know for certain who he is. You do? Oh, yes. But there, what can I do about it? Perhaps if I were a woman. Oh, yes. I see what you mean. There's 300 sovereigns for information leading to his apprehension, isn't there? That is so, ma'am. Then if I could provide the necessary proof for you... What? Oh, no, no, no. I couldn't possibly allow you to, to expose yourself to such an indignity. I should not be exposing myself, Rector. Oh, but even so, ma'am, I... But think what a service I would be doing for the community. Yes, perhaps that might be worth the sacrifice. Of course. Now, who do you think this Turpin is? At this very moment, ma'am, he is sitting... Downstairs. Here cometh the first lesson. 
Why? What's going on? It's what's coming off that matters. <laughs> Do you know, I could just manage them two. Be in there all night. Anybody there? Ah, there you are, you little minx. Your note, I believe. Was it a great surprise to you? To be frank, I don't know. I have what you French call a certain je ne sais quoi. Yes, <laughs> and I hope to see it, mon cher. Yeah, you shall, my dear, all in good time. Oh, don't rush me. We well, think that two people like us, living in the same place, should get better acquainted, no? Oh, but definitely. <laughs> uh, oui, oui. <laughs> what exactly did you uh, have in mind? I was about to have a bath. Perhaps you will join me. <laughs> it's all the same to you. I'd have a cup of... Well, a bath? A bath together, you mean? Oh, you English, you say such very naughty things. Oh, but I... Let me help you off with your things. Uh, certainly not. What an outrageous suggestion. But am I not a desirable woman? Yes. Let's just take off your breeches and have a paddle with me. What a disgraceful suggestion. Certainly not. You're mad. Madam, excuse yes. me. Yes. Are, you, yes. are you out of your mind? <laughs> the gentleman needs some assistance to this round. No, 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 You don't understand. I was on there on business. Look, I... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, get out, mother! Will you please leave me alone, you fine girl? Ah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. He who covets another man's weapon shall himself be smitten. Isaiah? No. The Reverend Fletcher. enough out there for a good collection? Oh, I'll just pop out and see. You pop out anymore, we'll have standing room only. flock this beautiful day I cannot help but be struck by the thought that seldom under one roof can there have been gathered such a fine collection of thieves and fornicators oh yes 
You may well look guilty and ashamed, all of you. What has become of the priceless gift of virginity? Gone. What has become of the promised sanctity of marriage? Gone. If there is one man, just one man amongst you, who can say in all truthfulness that within the past week he has not committed adultery, then he may leave this church now and go with my blessing. Ah, we have at least one good man with us. Well done, Brother Bodkin. Oh, it's not that, Rector. You just reminded me where I left my hat last night. <laughs> for a most interesting sermon. Thank you, ma'am. One can but sow the seed and pray that it will bear fruit. Oh, but of course. Uh, I must tell you that the man you suspect of being Dick Turpin, I'm afraid we did not succeed in getting a look at his, uh, uh, you know. Oh, well, ma'am, no matter. I've since learned that he doesn't have one. Oh, dear, the poor man. Uh, birthmark, I mean. Oh, I see. <laughs> Good day, ma'am. I should advise caution in your dealings with that woman, Rector. Oh, how so? She is, not to put too fine a point on it, a shameless doxy. Oh, I'm afraid you misjudge her, sir. Misjudge her? The minute I entered her room, she asked me to bath with her. Perhaps she wanted to show you the beauties of that fair city. Not that bath. But you're not far from the truth. I know what beauty she wanted to show me. That is terrible, terrible. Tell me, did you marry? Certainly not. I came here for one thing and one thing only. That is what I was asking you. Did you? To apprehend this rogue Turpin. Ah, yes, of course. I, I shall pray for your success in that venture, sir. Don't worry, Rector. I'll have him on the end of a rope's end or my name's not Desmond Fancy. He left to go. I think that covers it, Sergeant. Have important clue to identity of Turpin investigation proceeding. Sounds all right, Captain. Mm. Get it off to the Chief right away. I often wonder what chance crime has against the modern scientific methods at our disposal. None, sir. None. It seems incredible, but that message will actually be in London this time tomorrow morning. It's like a miracle, sir. All right, we'll get it off, then. Yes. Look out, sir! Oh, filthy beast. Give me a bit of paper. Don't be silly. That pigeon will be miles away by now. Uh, oh, yeah. Stop! If you value your lives, don't make a move. What do you want? The one who calls himself Dandy Desmond. That's That's him. Which one of you is looking for Big Dick? He is. What do you want with him? Speak up. Or would you rather a shot through your guts? You heard the man tell him. Uh, well, we know where we can get our hands on a great deal of money, you see. That's right, a fortune. And, well, the job is a little bit big for just the two of us. Much too big. So we thought uh, he might like to join us. That's really. right, share. What exactly is this job? Well, uh, it's... No, 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 we'll not discuss this with anyone else but Big Dick personally. Naturally not personally. Very well. Be on the London Road at ten o'clock tonight. Four miles out by the blasted oak. Uh, we'll be there. Come armed and wear thee. What about that? I've tricked him. He's fallen right into my trap. Your trap? Don't you see? He'll meet me face to face. Well, well, and I suppose I had nothing whatsoever to do with it. Nothing. I have the sweet smell of success. I'm glad about that. I thought it was the pigeon. Well, Bodkin, what have you got in there for then? I got involved in a fight with Katie's husband. It was bad luck. What do you mean, bad luck? Wow, he, he found my hat before I had time to get back there. You're too much a gentleman you are. Next time, keep your hat on. Uh, you rotten soul, so get oh, out of I should get my own back. <laughs> uh, I should fix I in your rail. Afternoon, Constable. What? Hey. You've been.
busy then? No. No, no, of course I'm not. No. Good, because I wanted to have a word with you. Shall I come in? No, no, no. no, no. I'll uh, come out there. Get off. Got the locket. Oh, that's all right. She's, uh, Katie's not a prisoner. No. She's coming here to make a complaint, you see. <laughs> her husband beat her up. Oh, I see. Well, she was showing me how he did it. Yeah, I saw that as well. well would you mind telling me what it is you want, please? Ooh, I'm in a hurry. Oh, yes, yes. Now, what was it now? Well, 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 no, it was something important. Oh, for pity's sake. I've got it. You so have I. I do hear as how you're after this Dick Turpin fellow, is that right? Well, of course we are. What about it? Yeah. If you're out on the London Road, ten o'clock tonight, by the old blasted oak there. Ten o'clock. By the blasted oak. Here they come. Right on time. <laughs> This looks like the place. But it's not a blasted oak, it's a bloody you. No, no, no. That one there, sir. Oh, that one, I see. Mask. You... Oh! 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 It's me. Oh, yes. Put your mask down, sir. Well, that should be the constable. I can hear something. What? I said I think I hear something coming. I know what you said, but what? It sounds like a coach. What would he be doing in a coach? I don't know, but it's bang on ten o'clock, so it must be him. All right, all right, don't panic. Don't panic. Pistol. What? I haven't had a drop. No, sir. Pistol. Oh, oh pistol. Yeah. Get ready, lads. We're coming up to it now. You wait there. I'll get in position. Stand and deliver. Catch him! Get him, lads! Oh, oh, leave oh, me alone! Oh, get your ass oh, off me immediately! Oh, 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 you have no right to behave like All right, Turpin! The game's up. You might just as well come quietly. I'm not Turpin! Oh, no, of course not. I am, I am Captain Fancy of the Bow Street Runners. In name Titania, Queen of all the fairies. <laughs> right, back to business. been up all night. You have, sir. Pardon? Well, you didn't get in until after two o'clock this morning. Was it that late? I had no idea. No matter. As long as you've got what you wanted. What do you mean by that, Miss Hoggett? You went to Squire Trelawney's to get the donations for the church sale tomorrow. <laughs> of course I did. Even so, I was surprised it took you so long. Well, I did drop in to see old Mrs. Giles. She's very poorly, I'm afraid. Oh, can it be wondered at? Her husband treats her shamefully, I hear. You'd never believe he was once a knight. It's too much for a woman of that age. Uh, speaking of that, sir, I think you ought to do something about Harriet soon. In what way, Miss Holly? Well, she was very late in again last night, only two minutes before you. I think she's up to no good. Oh, I'm sure there's some quite innocent explanation. Well, I'm not. And I discovered, quite by chance, of course, quite a large amount of money hidden away in the drawer in her room. Really? Yes. Now, I don't know where she's getting it, but I'm sure she's not getting it from you. You're dead right there. You're... Quite right, Miss Huggett, I'm afraid. I'll have a serious talk with her. Oh, by the way, news came through from the constable. They've caught Dick Turbin. Well, 
That really is wonderful news. Now all innocent, God-fearing people can travel about in safety. <laughs> oh, 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 stop it, you hear? You don't know who I am. I'll have you all arrested. Oh, oh go away. Leave me alone. Oh, it's humiliating. Oh. A waste of good food and all. Is that all you can say after getting me into this dreadful predicament? Me? What did I do? Nothing. That was the trouble. Couldn't you see we were being led into a trap? Excuse me, but I was distinctly under the impression that they were walking right into your trap. If you can't talk sense, shut your trap. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh the chief would see me now. Oh, stop it, go away. <laughs> Fill out. Get off home. <laughs> Urgent message from the parish constable, up sir. Right, give it here. Stone the crows! Archteeth, what is it? Urgent message, just come in, sir. Can't you deal with it? I'm very busy. But it says they're called Turpin, sir. What? <laughs> Let me see that. Step me side, but it's true. Did Captain Fancy have anything to do with this? No, sir. Uh, not that I know of. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. Tell your constable I shall come myself. Right, sir. I'll order your coach, sir. Uh, no, not yet. I have a bit of business to clear up here first. I shall travel overnight and be with him in the morning. Yes, Miss Huggett? I have Harriet here, sir. Oh, yes, the talk. Bring her right in, please. Come along, Harriet. The rector wants to have a word with you. Miss Huggett, I think it would be better if you left us. I may have to say things that could prove shocking to anyone of your gentle upbringing. Oh, very well, sir. Thank you. You are rogue. <laughs> Now, Harriet, I must have a very serious talk with you. Oh, oh, yes, sir. I am very shocked to hear from Miss Hoggett that you have been staying out late at night on several occasions. Is this true? Oh, I cannot tell a lie, sir. I have been a bad girl. Well, it must stop right away, do you hear? Oh, but, stop. sir, you see, I cannot help myself. Somebody gets the better well, on then me. Then you must fight the good fight. Fight against it. Get thee behind me, Satan. Oh, anything you say, sir. <laughs> You must learn to resist the, the temptations of the flesh and fight against the devil and, and his and that that when he beckons most strongly and the flame of purity burns at its weakest. Oh, I'll, I will try, sir. I, I promise you. Now, now is the time to cry enough. Enough. Oh, from now on, I swear I'll be a good girl. Oh, very good. It is not enough to say that you will be good. Deeds speak more powerfully than words. The temptation to sin is forever with us. <laughs> You've got to get on top of it. Oh! oh. I am on top of it now. I, I'm sure of that, sir. Get off, you little devil. Oh, not likely. I might not get another chance like this. Another bit. Oh, sir, all I want is your forgiveness. Give it to me, please. Give it to me. I wish I had the time. No, no, no. First, you must prove yourself by stopping what you're doing. Ah! You must become once again in thought and deed and get off. Get off the road to ruin and let go. Let go, you little Let go the devil in his ways. Stop! Thank you, Miss Hoggett. I feel much better now. Rector? Oh, Rector, are you all right? Oh, yes, thank you, Miss Hoggett. It's always so distressing to me, a, a scene like that. Poor girl. Don't waste any pity on her, sir. She was more than ready for it. How right you are, Miss Hoggett. How very right. Oh, Rector, I can't bear to see you Thank unhappy you, like this. Oh, no, not again. Oh, let me comfort you, sir. <laughs> I still don't see why I had to come with you. I thought you would enjoy seeing the rich who stripped us of all our belongings behind bars. Well, it's reassuring it can never happen again, certainly. Exactly, my dear. Halt! Stand and deliver! What the devil's going on? Everybody out! Oh, oh. no! It can't oh. be! All right, 
Tom, stable him. Right oh. You did very well tonight, Harriet. Oh, oh, thank you, sir. I must say, it is a pleasure working for you. You're a good girl. Oh, you don't want to believe everything you read in my references. Don't tell me a nice young girl like you has gone and strayed from the primrose path. Oh, no. It was indoors. I hope it was only once. Well, I don't know. Nobody ever taught me how to count proper. Well, we'll have to do something about that, won't we? Oh, will you teach me, sir? I'd be very happy to. To count right up to a hundred? Well, up to three for a start. Three? How many is that? Well, for instance... That's one, and that's one too. Well, I know that. <laughs> uh, no, 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 we'll start again, hang on. That's one, and one makes two. Yes. And two and one makes three. Ooh, that's lovely. Show me again. <laughs> With pleasure. Who's that down there? It, it, it's all right, Miss Hoggett, it's only me. You nip off to bed and don't forget to say your prayers. What for? I never seem to get what I ask for. Have patience. <laughs> oh, Miss Hoggett, you shouldn't have waited up for me. Oh, I was worried about you, Rector. I didn't know where you'd got to. I didn't get anywhere, I'm afraid. But it's after midnight. Is it? Oh, well, I stopped by with old Mrs Giles. She's failing fast out here. Oh, sir, again, you give... Far too much of your time to people in need, I fear. Well, you know what the good book says. It is better to give than receive. What you need, sir, is someone by your side to comfort you, share life's burdens, warm you if needs be. Oh, I don't know, Miss Hoggett. I do have my warming pan, you know. Yes, but where would you be without me to put it in for you? Eh? Oh, yes, Miss Huggett. Well, I, I must say you are an admirable housekeeper, and I really don't know what I should do without you. Yes, but a housekeeper is more limited in ways she can be of service than, say, a wife. Yeah, true. True, Miss Huggett. I think it's time I got to my warming pan. Oh, sir, don't you see what I'm trying to tell you? Sir, for ten years now I've run your house for you, looked after you, cooked for you. And I am most grateful, Miss Huggett. Nursed you when you were ill and helped you with your work and being at your back and call here at night. And I appreciate it, Miss Hoggett. Miss Hoggett, yes, thank you very much, Miss Hoggett. You're very kind, Miss Hoggett. Three bags full, Miss Hoggett. Do you think that's all I want in exchange? Well, I do reimburse you adequately. But I'm a woman with all a woman's needs. I want more than that, much more. I, I really don't understand it, Miss Hoggett. If you're not happy... Here. Oh, but I am. There's no one else for me. No one. I'll serve you to the end of my days. But it's only natural. I should want something more. Well, shall we talk about it in the morning, Miss Hoggett? Good night. I may be wrong, but I think she's after a rise. I must say, it's wonderful of people to part with such valuable-looking items in these hard times. Well, sometimes they do need a little persuading. Dashed if I could afford to give a coat like that. Oh, come now, Squire. You're one of our chief benefactors. I, Mom? I've not given a damn thing. <laughs> No one's asked me to. But I understood from the rector I that... I think that we ought to let them in now. Excuse me. I'd like this horn. You've got one. Mrs. Giles, I'm so pleased to see you've recovered from your indisposition. What indisposition? There's nothing wrong with me. But the rector said you were confined to your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Here, stop that, you old devil. <laughs> but the rector said you were sinking fast. What, me? Oh, dear, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Looks like we got another big success. Oh, not surprising. Where else could you get a fur coat and a silk dress just for a few shillings? Don't ask me. I'm only a poor rector. <laughs> I've saved a little something for you. For me? What for? For being a good girl. 
Oh, oh! if this is what I get for being a good girl, just think what I could get being a bad one. <laughs> You'll find out one day. <laughs> Woo! Promises, promises. <laughs> Here, if it goes on like this, we'll be sold out within the hour. We'll have to start another collection straight away, won't we? Foster man, Foster! Go on, man! Come on! I don't like the look of that. We did that one last night, didn't we? And the week before. Probably go to the parish constable. That's what I'm afraid of. Shall I go down there and see what happens? Good idea. Yeah. Cool. Get changed first. Go with her. I was just having me grub. Well, look lively, will you? It's the chief of the runners. Good. Welcome, ah, sir. Close that damn door. And give us something to cover ourselves with. Hang on a minute. Come in, sir. Here you are, sir. And something for the lady, too, sir. What a funny way to travel. You stay there, my dear. You're the parish constable. That's right, John. So, you're the fellow that claims to have caught Turpin. Yes, sir. <laughs> and his mate, too, sir. I caught him red handed, I did, sir. Really? May I see them? Of course, sir. Right this way, sir. That's them, sir. I knew it! I knew it! All right, all right. Well, Captain, in all my experience, I can safely say I've never heard of such blind, blundering stupidity. Yes, I agree. I thought Turpin would behave more cleverly than that. I mean, your stupidity! Has it not occurred to you that the man who told you where to meet him last night was probably Turpin himself? Oh, no, sir, no. Is that between you and me? I think our presence here scared him off. Then I'll wager he's across the border by now. Well, it might interest you to know that the man who was so scared by you last night robbed us of everything we damn well got. He took my most treasured possession. Oh, come, my lady. Surely that went long ago. <clears throat> my mother's bracelet. <laughs> You stay here, and I'll try and get near enough to hear what they're saying. Well, give me his excuses. You've heard all that before, Fancy. Believe me, Sir Roger, I know how these villains work. This is the old way. One word in I Ah, good idea, sir. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we're right back where we started. All this talk about Big Dick. I've had enough of it. Mm. Step me vitals. What's the matter with you? Over there, Strap. It's him. Good. Who? The man. The man who tricked you last night. The man who tricked me last night? That was no, you. Never mind about that. Are you quite sure, Fancy? Yes, sir. Positive. Right. I'll take charge now. Constable, Look Sergeant, out. cover the door. Wait, sir. Come on. Cover the door. Double deal. Hurry on. Look out! Ladies, you're about to witness the capture of the notorious Dick Turpin. Who are you? Oh, afraid not. They've made a mistake. You're quite sure it's him, Fancy? Quite sure, sir. You'll have a job proving it. As it happens, I won't. He's a very distinctive birthmark, sir, in a rather unusual place. Oh, well. Uh, he's not called Big Dick for nothing, sir. Oh, Big Gad! You mean it's on his... With your permission, sir? By all means, carry on, Fancy. You, sir! Take your clothes off. Right. 
Would you ladies mind retiring into the next room, please? Come on, my little doxies. Come on. <laughs> All right, carry on. You're making a big mistake, you know. I don't think so. Well, all right then. That's enough! They're real, feel them. That won't be necessary. Well, fancy! It's... it's a woman, sir. Brilliant! A masterpiece of deduction, you blithering jackass! I'll have you hide for this! But, sir, he could still... I mean, she could still be Dick Turpin, couldn't she? Yes! And where's your precious birthmark? And where's the thing it's supposed to be on? I just realised it. Oh? She's the rector's housemaid, sir. <laughs> the rector's housemaid? That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> Here, wait till the rector hears about this. <laughs> oh, no, I'd prefer that you didn't mention this to anyone. <laughs> what in heaven's name is going on here? Oh, my bracelet! What? <laughs> oh, it's blood, so it is. I told you she was something to do with it. I told you. <laughs> Hold her, uh, constable. <laughs> Good man. Take her away and lock her up. Come on, my girl. I'm going to have you in the lock-up. Oh. Most successful, Miss Holly. How much did we make? Rector, I must talk to you. Yes, what is it, Miss Holly? Rector, I've always been loyal and honest with you, haven't I? Yes, of course, Miss Holly. Then why should you lie to me, you of all people? Lie to you? Yes, you said you'd gone to visit Squire Trelawney the other night, but you didn't. And Mrs. Giles? Oh, yes, well, I did tell you a little white lie, Miss Hoggett. Why? Why should you do such a thing to me? It's another woman, isn't it? Yes. I must know. Tell me, is it? Miss Hoggett, please. It is! I knew it! Oh, how good you! After all the love and attention I've lavished on you, yes. playing your organ. Rector! Rector! Oh. oh, excuse me. Yes, Tom, what is it? Bad news, I'm afraid. Damn and blast it! Oh. Tom, Tom, Tom. No news is so bad that it merits the use of a cuss word, particularly in front of Miss Hoggett. Sorry, Rector, but they've got Harriet. Bloody hell! Oh. Oh. All right, all right. No point in your staying in this wretched place, my dear. You go on back to London. But why can you not accompany me? I wish I could, dear heart. But I fear I cannot trust that fool fancy to bring this business to a successful conclusion. Be it so. Your servant, ma'am. Why, well, your lordship, are you not returning to London? I could not, ma'am. I wanted to see more of you. Oh, la, sir. After helping me out of that bath, there is little more to see. <laughs> yes, but one doesn't view a luscious, ripe peach without wanting to sink one's teeth into it. A peach? Is that not what you English play cricket on? <laughs> no, ma'am. Though I must confess, I'd relish an innings with you. I do not play the game, sir. <laughs> Well, ma'am, perhaps if we went somewhere a little more private, I could teach you. Oh, mon Dieu! Who do you think I am? A damned detective cockney wench with an absurdly bogus French accent. All right. And I know what a peach is. But it doesn't mean I'm easy to pluck. I'm a very wealthy man. And influential at court. Well, in that case, perhaps we should go somewhere more private. Hmm? No! It's no good, sir. I can't get any sense out of her. Uh, leave it to me. I know how to handle this baggage. Now, look here, my girl. Come along. We know very well you're a member of Big Dick's gang. Then why do you keep 
keep asking me. Where can we find Dick? Oh, search me. I've been living here for ten years and I've never found any. Yeah, we have ways of making you talk. Torture? That's against the law nowadays. You're a comely wench. There's nothing to stop me forcing my attentions on you. Oh, promises, promises. Oh, oh, get off. She's incorrigible. Let me out. Let me out. <laughs> Are you all right, sir? Dreadful creature. Yes? It's the rector wants to see the captain. All right, we'll show him in. So it's true. Harriet, what have you done? Oh, it's no good, Rector. You won't get a word out of her. What is her crime? This may come as a bit of a shock to you, Rector, but she's suspected of being a member of Turpin's gang. I cannot believe it. Captain, let me take her home with me. I'm sure I can get the truth out of her. That's not possible, I'm afraid. She is the sprat to catch the mackerel. What do you mean? Well, I have your word that you'll keep this plan strictly to yourself, of course. Oh, yes, of course. Well, let us suppose that you were Dick Turpin. What? <laughs> A ridiculous supposition, I know. <laughs> Absurd. Yes, but if you were, and you learned of her arrest, what would you do? I would try to rescue her. Exactly. And how would you stop me from doing so? I have men all round the house. You'd get in all right, but you'd never get out. In that case, Captain, I'm very glad I'm not him. I would hate to pit my wits against a man of your brilliance. <laughs> Right enough, what the captain says. The constable's got his men all round the house. No wonder his lordship looks so happy. <laughs> there must be some way we can get her out of there. Oh, it'll take a bit of doing. Right now, come on, lads, settle down nice and quiet again because once again it's my very great pleasure to introduce Madame Desiree and her Isaac Desparadis. <laughs> Got it. Come on. The glories of all women, their charms and their traditions, we are now proud to show to you in different positions. The maidens of the woodlands, they hunted for a sheer love of it were oftentimes called nymphs because they couldn't get enough of it. <laughs> the bestial virgins of old Rome, who from their birth were taught to stay forever pure and chaste, but never to get caught. <laughs> In languorous sleep, so sightly, it is not the show that tires them so, but doing it twice nightly. Bottle rum, please, Dutch. Certainly, ladies. Thank you. Out of sight until they come in. <laughs> Give me that. Just a minute, dear. Get off. Captain. Captain. Captain Fancy. Oh, 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 you did give oh. us a shock. Who are oh. you and what are you doing here? His lordship sent us across with a bottle for you. Oh, how very thoughtful of him. And he suggested we stay and keep you company for a bit. Well, I could do with a bit. <laughs> Saucy. <laughs> All right, Constable, you can leave us now. All right, you. Well, you're not exactly a couple of fillies, are you? <laughs> a gentleman of taste. We'll just have a couple of noggins to loosen things up, eh? <laughs> Lovely. Here. Oh. 
Is that the one who's supposed to belong to Dick Turpin's gang? That's right, love. Fancy her being a highwayman? Ain't you afraid she'd get away? <laughs> no chance of that. <laughs> you never know. If you got too near the bar, she could reach through and grab you from behind, couldn't she? Oh, come over here, my dear. Sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's your name, my little pretty one? <laughs> Bridget. Oh, Bridget. Mm -hmm. Most of the fellows call me Bridge. Bridge? Why? Because I come across. Oh, oh, I, 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 I get off me. There you are, my dear. Oh, 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 and what might your pretty little name be? Oh, well, darling, you can call me Big Dick. Oh, uh, what a pretty. What? Harriet, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What the. I... What do you want? I'll tell you what I want. Get over that door. Come on. Huh? Do what I tell you. Constable! Yes, Captain! Go over to the inn and fetch us another bottle of rum! What, already? Don't argue now! All right, Captain. All right, Michelle. What did you come for? You know what I've come for. Get your clothes off. What? You heard. Get them off. <gasps> <laughs> Hey, Butkin! Another bottle of rum for the captain. <laughs> what the devil? Excuse me, Nell. Constable! You're supposed to be on guard. Yes, I know, sir, but the, the captain sent me across for another bottle, sir. Another bottle? What the blaze is for? Well, I suppose they must have finished the one what you sent them, sir. When I sent them? What the devil are you talking about? Well, you know, she's the one you sent them two old women across with, sir. Two old women? What do you mean? <laughs> Didn't you, sir? I, I've been nobbled. Oh, oh, wow, wow. Come on. I was silly old constable. Come along now, Cappy. Who's had too much to drink then? He has. <laughs> Who's going to be Yiki Dicky in the morning? Definite, I'm afraid, sir. It seems one of the constable's men did see the women leave last night with someone they thought was me. And you know who that was, of course? Oh, no, it wasn't me, sir. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm talking about the two women, you fool. Uh, now you come to mention it, sir, there was something familiar about one of those women. I could have sworn we'd met before somewhere. It was chopping you blasted off. Who else would bother rescuing a girl? Ah, yes, I had considered that possibility, sir. Oh, my God. What I don't understand is... He must have known about the trap we set. How? Did you tell anyone? What? Oh, certainly not, sir. Ah, except the rector. Oh, the rector. Oh, yes, well, here. Are you certain you told no one else? I'm positive, sir. What? Well, what is it, sir? Where did you get that cloak from? Well, you know, I lost all mine, and the landlord very kindly lent me his. Pretty awful, I know. It's but... mine! Oh, I don't think so, sir. He told me he got it at the church sale. Church sale? I suppose it's possible that... I was just thinking the same thing, sir. Of course! That's who the woman reminded me of. Who? The old rector. So similar, it could almost have been him. And you told him about our plan to catch Turpin. Yes, that's right. I... Oh. I'll deal with you later. Strap, sir. Go to the constable and get all the men he has. Yes, sir. And meet me at the church. Yes, sir. I know. I suspected him right from the beginning. I said... Oh, they're gone. The text for my sermon today comes from the Book of Numbers. Be sure your sins will find you out. Indeed, it astonishes me that you come here Sunday after Sunday and look me in the eye without shame. Me, your spiritual and moral leader. Me, whose only sin has been to let you continue in these sinful ways. I tell you now...
Uh, where was I? Oh, yes. Now I will tell you. The day of judgment is nigh. Yes, indeed, I can say that again. Yes, sinners, the agents of retribution are all around us. It's uh, in the middle of the service, sir. Good, then we have him. May I, sir? Well, certainly not, Captain. Have you no respect? We must let him finish it. Constable, how many exits from this church? Uh, it's just that one, sir, and the one in the vestry, sir. Right. You and your man cover that. We'll take this. Even now, they are getting closer. And so, my friends, it seems that we have a bit of a problem on our hands, doesn't it? Believe me, we have. Oh, you might say to yourself, I am quite safe in this place. Nobody would touch me here, would they? Praise be to heaven, you're right. But what will happen after this service is over? and you have to leave this sanctuary. We will now sing him 202. Oh God, our help in ages past. Bless you, my children. See what I mean? I think we've had it. Never, never. Harriet's still hiding in the crypt. Tell her what's happened. Bring her up here. Yeah, right. you can do on this, the day of retribution. We'll try it again, and this time, give. Him 202, oh God, our help! Here, gentlemen. Sorry, Rick Jordan. I've been ordered to arrest you. Oh, but the service isn't over yet. Oh, well. I'm just about to say my final prayer. Oh, well. In that case. Would you care to join me? Eh? Come in. Come along. Come right in. Come along. There you are. Kneel, please, gentlemen. Over here, please. Bless these, my children. Give them the strength to carry out their duties. And for what they are about to receive, may they be truly grateful. Oh. Amen. Tie them up. Come on, let's get out of it. Oh, blimey. Get out. 
Wait a minute, I'll be back. To say that I am disappointed is to put it mildly. Has everybody given? All right. Those gentlemen at the back? Oh, no, I, I didn't go to them. Then do so. Ah. During this collection, we will sing hymn 202, Oh God, Our Help. Well done, boys. Oh, sorry, Harriet. I think we'll borrow his lordship's coach. Tom, go and persuade the coachman. Very good, Rector. <laughs> <laughs> There's something funny going on here. I was just going to say the same thing, sir. I don't like it. Strap, go to the vestry and see if everything's in order. Yes, sir. Any sign of Tom yet? Oh, I'll have a look. Right. Constable! Constable! Look out! The sergeant's coming! Oh, no! Have the belfry, quick! <laughs> Where the hell have they got to? Hang on. This will fix it. Right. what I was about to do. And about time too. <laughs> 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 